Bill and Ben are tank engine twins. Each has four wheels, a tiny chimney and dome, and a small squat cab. Their trucks are filled with china clay. It is needed for pottery, paper, paint, and many other things. The twins are now kept busy pulling the trucks for engines on the main line and for ships in the harbor. One morning, they arranged some trucks and went away for more. They returned to find them all gone. The twins were most surprised. Their drivers examined a patch of oil. That's a diesel, they said. It's a wattle, asked Bill. A diesel, I think, replied Ben. There's a notice about them in our shed. Coughs and sneezels spread diseasels. You had a cough in your smoke box yesterday. It's your fault the diseasel came. It isn't, it is. Stop arguing, you two, laughed their drivers. Let's go and rescue our trucks. Bill and Ben were horrified. But the diseasel will magic us away like the trucks. He won't magic us, replied their drivers. We'll more likely magic him. Listen, he doesn't know your twins. So we'll take away your names and numbers, and then this is what we'll do. Puffing hard, the twins set off on their journey to find the diesel. They were looking forward to playing tricks on him. Creeping into the yard, they found the diesel on a siding with the missing trucks. Ben hid behind, but Bill went boldly alongside. The diesel looked up. Do you mind? Yes, said Bill, I do. I want my trucks, please. These are mine, said the diesel. Go away. Bill pretended to be frightened. You're a big bully, he whimpered. You'll be sorry. He ran back and hid behind the trucks on the other side. Ben now came forward. Truck stealer, hissed Ben. He ran away too. Bill took his place. A large hopper was loading his trucks full of coal. Thomas was still being cheeky. Careful, he warned. Watch out with those silly trucks. Go on, go on, go on, muttered the truck. And by the way, went on Thomas, those buffers don't look very safe to me. The last load poured down. Help, I'm choking, cried Thomas. Get me out. Percy was worried. He couldn't help laughing. Thomas's smart blue paint was covered in coal dust from smoke box to bunker. Ha <laughs> ha, chuckled Percy. You don't look really useful now, Thomas. You look really disgraceful. I'm not disgraceful, choked Thomas. You did that on purpose. Get me out. It took so long to clean Thomas that he wasn't in time for his next train. Toby had to take Annie and Clarabel. Poor Thomas, whispered Annie to Clarabel. They were most upset. Thomas was grumpy in the shed that night. Toby thought it a great joke, but Percy was cross with Thomas for thinking he had made his paint dirty on purpose. Fancy a really useful blue engine like Thomas becoming a disgrace to the fat controller's railway. 
Next day, Thomas was feeling more cheerful as he watched Percy bring his trucks from the junction. The trucks were heavy and Percy was tired. Have a drink, said his driver, then you'll feel better. The water column stood at the end of the siding with the unsafe buffers. Suddenly, Percy found that he couldn't stop. The buffers didn't stop him either. Oh, wailed Percy, help! The buffers were broken and Percy was wheel deep in coal. It was time for Thomas to leave. He had seen everything. Now Percy has learned his lesson too, he chuckled to himself. That night, the two engines made up their quarrel. A long stretch of line lay ahead. In the distance was a bridge. It seemed to Gordon that there was something on the bridge. His driver thought so too. Whoa, Gordon, he said and shut off steam. Oh, said Gordon, it's only a cow. Choo, choo. He moved slowly onto the bridge. But the cow wouldn't shoo. She had lost her calf and felt lonely. Moo, she said sadly. Everyone tried to send her away, but she wouldn't go. Henry arrived. What's this? A cow? I'll soon settle her. Be off, be off. Moo, said the cow. Henry backed away nervously. I don't want to hurt her. At the next station, Henry's guard told them about the cow and warned the signalman that the line was blocked. That must be Bluebell, said the porter. Her calf is here, ready to go to market. Percy will take it along. At the bridge, Bluebell was very pleased to see her calf again, and the porter led them away. Not a word. Keep it dark, whispered Gordon and Henry to each other. They felt rather silly, but the story soon spread. Well, 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 chuckled Edward. Two big engines afraid of a cow. Afraid? Rubbish, said Gordon. We didn't want the poor thing to hurt herself by running up against us. We stopped so as not to excite her. You see what I mean, my dear Edward? Yes, Gordon, said Edward. Gordon felt somehow that Edward saw only too well. Stop, stop, I've got Thomas's passengers, wailed Bertie, roaring up to the gates. It was no good, Edward was gone. Bother, said Bertie. Bother Thomas's fireman not coming to work today. Why did I promise to help the passengers catch the train? That will do, Bertie, said his driver. A promise is a promise and we must keep it. I'll catch Edward or bust, said Bertie. Oh, my gears and axles, he groaned, toiling up the hill. I'll never be the same bus again. Hooray, hooray, I see him, cheered Bertie as he reached the top. Oh, no, Edward's at the station. No, he stopped at a crossing. Hooray, hooray. Bertie tore down the hill. Well done, Bertie, shouted his passengers. Go it. Bertie skidded into the yard. Wait, wait, cried Bertie. He was just in time to see Edward pop.
puff away. I'm sorry, said Bertie. Never mind, said the passengers. After him quickly. Third time lucky, you know. Do you think we'll catch him at the next station, driver? There's a good chance, replied the driver. Our road keeps close to the line and we can climb hills better than Edward. I'll just make sure. He spoke to the station master. Bertie and the passengers waited impatiently. Yes, we'll do it this time, said the driver. Hooray, called the passengers, as Bertie chased after Edward once more. This hill is too steep, this hill is too steep, grumbled the coaches as Edward snorted in front. They reached the top at last and ran smoothly into the station. Peep, peep, whistled Edward. Get in quickly, please. The guard blew the whistle and Edward's driver looked back. But the flag didn't wave. Then he heard Bertie. Everything seemed to happen at once, and the station master told the guard and driver what had happened. I'm sorry about the chase, Bertie, said Edward. My fault, replied Bertie. Today there was a surprise waiting for Edward in the yard. It was a traction engine. Hello, said Edward. You're not broken and rusty. What are you doing here? I'm Trevor. They're going to break me up next week. What a shame, said Edward. My driver says I only need some paint, polish and oil to be as good as new. But my master says I'm old-fashioned. Edward snorted. People say I'm old-fashioned, but I don't care. The fat controller says I'm a useful engine. What work did you do? My master would send us from farm to farm. We threshed corn, hauled logs and did lots of other work. The children loved to see us. Trevor shut his eyes, remembering. Oh yes, I like children. Edward set off for the station. Broken up, what a shame. Broken up, what a shame. I must help Trevor, I must. He thought of all his friends who liked engines. But strangely, none of them would have room for a traction engine at home. It's a shame, it's a shame, he hissed. Then, beep, beep, why didn't I think of him before? There, on the platform, was the very person. Hello, Edward. You look upset. What's the matter, Charlie? He asked the driver. There's a traction engine in the scrapyard, Vicar. He'll be broken up next week. Jem Cole says he never drove a better engine. Do save him, sir. He saws wood and gives children rides. We'll see, replied the Vicar. Jem Cole came on Saturday. The Reverend's coming to see you, Trevor. Maybe he'll buy you. <sighs> Do you think he will, asked Trevor, hopefully. He will when I've lit your fire and cleaned you up. The vicar and his two boys arrived that evening. Trevor hadn't felt so happy for months. He chuffered about the yard. Show your paces, Trevor, said the vicar. Later, he came out of the office smiling. I've got him cheap, Jem, cheap. Do you hear that, Trevor? cried Jem. The Reverend saved you and you live at the vicarage now. Peep, peep, whistled Trevor. Now Trevor's home is in the vicarage orchard and he sees Edward every day. One morning, Percy was careless. I say, you engines, I'm to take some trucks to Thomas's junction. The fat controller chose me especially. He must know I'm a really useful engine. 
More likely he wants you out the way, grunted James. Gordon looked across to James. They were making a plan. James and I were just speaking about signals at the junction. We can't be too careful about signals, but then I needn't say that to a really useful engine like you, Percy. Percy felt flattered. We had spoken of backing signals, put in James. They need extra special care, you know. Would you like me to explain? No, thank you, James, said Percy. I know all about signals. Percy was a little worried. I wonder what backing signals are, he thought. Never mind, I'll manage. He puffed crossly to his trucks and felt better. He came to a signal. Bother, it's at danger. The signal moved to show line clear. Its arm moved up instead of down. Percy had never seen that sort of signal before. Down means go and up means stop. So upper still must mean go back. I know it's one of those backing signals. Come on, Percy, said his driver. Off we go. Stop! You're going the wrong way. But it's a backing signal, Percy protested and told him about Gordon and James. The driver laughed and explained. Oh dear, said Percy. Let's start quickly before they see us. He was too late. Gordon saw everything. night, the big engines talked about signals. They thought the subject was funny. Percy thought they were being very silly. The new engine arrived. What's your name? asked the fat controller. Montague, sir, but I'm usually called Duck. They say I waddle. I don't really, sir, but I like Duck better than Montague. Good. Duck it shall be. Here, Percy, show Duck round. The two engines went off together. Soon they were very busy. James, Gordon and Henry watched Duck quietly doing his work. He seems a simple sort of engine. We'll have some fun and order him about. Smoke billowed everywhere. Percy was cross. Duck took no notice. They'll get tired of it soon. Do they tell you to do things, Percy? Yes, they do, answered Percy. Right, said Duck. We'll soon stop that nonsense. He whispered something. We'll do it later. The fat controller was looking forward to hot buttered toast for tea at home. Suddenly he heard an extraordinary noise. Whee! <laughs> Bother, he said, and hurried to the yard. Duck and Percy calmly sat on the points outside the shed, refusing to let the engines in. Gordon, James and Henry were furious. Stop that noise, bellowed the fat controller. They won't let us in, hissed Gordon. Duck, explain this behavior. Beg pardon, sir, but I'm a great Western engine. We do our work without fuss, but begging your pardon, sir, Percy and I would be glad if you would inform these um, engines that we only take orders from you. Silence! Snapped the fat controller. Percy and Duck, I am pleased with your work today, but not with your behavior tonight. You have caused a disturbance. Gordon, Henry and James sniggered. As for you, thundered the fat controller, you've been worse. You made the disturbance. Duck is quite right. This is my railway and I give the orders. After Percy went away, Duck was left to manage alone. 
He did so. Easily. Thomas grew crosser and crosser. Time's time, he grumbled. Why should I keep my passengers waiting while Henry and James dawdle about all day on viaducts? Don't blame me, snorted Henry. If we hurried across the viaduct, it might collapse. And then you'd have no passengers at all. What would you do then? Run my train on time for one thing, retorted Thomas. He hurried away before Henry could answer. Bertie was impatient too. He was time to arrive just after Thomas. His passengers found that instead of going straight from the bus to their train, they were kept waiting till Thomas arrived. Soon Bertie grew cross with Thomas. Late again, he remarked, as Thomas panted wearily in. We may be friends, but I thought you could go fast, Thomas. It's time we had another race. I reckon I could beat you now. Thomas let off steam loudly. Rubbish, he hissed fiercely. It's those main line engines. They dither about on their viaduct and then blame the fat controller's workmen. It's just an excuse for laziness, if you ask me. One day, James was later than ever at the junction. I'm sorry, Thomas, he puffed. I was held up at the station and the viaduct made it worse. It's lucky for you I'm a guaranteed connection, grumbled Thomas. Before James could answer, he puffed importantly away. Come along, come along, he panted to the coaches. Annie and Claravel did their best, but Thomas soon found that he couldn't save much time. Suddenly, Thomas saw Bertie ahead. His radiator was steaming. What's the matter? asked Thomas. You should be at the station by now. You're late. I feel dreadful, moaned Bertie, all upset inside, and driver says he can't make me better. Thank goodness you're late too. Can you take my passengers, please? They'll never get home otherwise. Of course, agreed Thomas. He now felt sorry for Bertie and promised to get help at the next station. Thomas set off again. Already he felt much more cheerful, and Bertie's passengers, travelling in Annie and Clarabel, all reached home safely. Until one day Donald had an accident. The rails were slippery. He couldn't stop in time. The fact controller was most annoyed. I am disappointed, Donald. I did not expect such, um, clumsiness from you. I had decided to send Douglas back and keep you. I'm sorry, sir, said Donald. I should think so, too. You have upset my arrangements. Now James will have to help with the goods work, while you have your tender mended. James won't like that. The fat controller was right. James grumbled dreadfully. Anyone would think, said Douglas, that Donald had his accident on purpose. I heard tell about an engine and some tar wagons. Shut up, said James. It's not funny. He didn't like to be reminded of his own accident. Well, 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 said Douglas. Surely, James, it wasn't a you. You didn't say. James didn't say. He slouched sulkily away. He's cross, sniggered the spiteful brake van. We'll try to make him crosser still. Hold back, giggled the trucks to each other. James did his best, but he was exhausted when they reached Edward Station. Luckily, Douglas was there. 
Help me up the hill, please, <sighs> panted James. These trucks are playing tricks. We'll show them, said Douglas. Slowly but surely, the snorting engines forced the trucks up the hill. But James was losing steam. I can't do it! I can't do it! Lay it to me! shouted Douglas. The guard was anxious. Go steady! The van's breaking! The van was in pieces. No one had been hurt, and soon Edward came to clear the mess. The fat controller was on board. I might have known it would be Douglas, he said. Douglas was grand, sir, said Edward. James had no steam left, but Douglas worked hard enough for three. I heard him from my yard. Two would have been enough, said the fat controller. Presently, they came to a drift which was larger than most. They charged it and were just backing for another try when... Lush sakes, Donald! It's Henry! Dinner, not fetch yourself, Henry. Wait a while. We'll have you out. Henry was very grateful. He saw all was not well. The twins were glum. They told him that the fat controller was returning soon. He'll send us back for sure. It's a shame, said Percy. A lot of nonsense about a broken signal box, grumbled Gordon. That spiteful brake van too, put in James. Good riddance, that's what I say. They were splendid in the snow, added Henry. It isn't fair. They all agreed that something must be done, but none knew what. Percy decided to talk to Edward about it. What you need, said Edward, is a deputation. He explained what that was. Percy ran back quickly. Edward says we need a, a depastation. Of course, said Gordon. The question is, what is a desperation, asked Henry. It's when engines tell the fat controller something's wrong, said Percy. Did you say tell the fat controller, asked Duck thoughtfully. There was a long silence. I propose, said Gordon, that Percy be our, um, disputation. Hi, squeaked Percy. I can't. Rubbish, Percy, said Henry. It's easy. That's settled then, said Gordon. Poor Percy wished it wasn't. Hello, Percy. It's nice to be back. Percy jumped. Uh, ye yes, yes, sir. Please, sir. You look nervous, Percy. What's the matter? Please, sir, they've made me a desperation, sir. To speak to you, sir. I don't like it, sir. The fat controller pondered. Do you mean a deputation, Percy? Yes, sir, please, sir. It's Donald and Douglas, sir. They say, sir, that if you send them away, sir, they'll be turned into scrap, sir. That would be dreadful, sir. Please, sir, don't send them away. Thank you, Percy. That will do. Later, the fat controller spoke to the engines. I had a deputation. I understand your feelings, but I do not approve of interference. He paused impressively. Donald and Douglas, I hear that your work in the snow was good. Percy and Toby were still asleep. Thomas suddenly remembered. Silly stick in the muds, he chuckled. I'll show them. Driver said I could manage without him. I'll just go out. Then I'll stop and weesh. That'll make them jump. Thomas thought he was being clever. Really, he was only moving because a careless cleaner had meddled with his controls. He soon found his mistake. He tried to wee, but he couldn't. He tried to stop, but he couldn't. He just kept rolling along. He didn't dare look at what was coming next. There was the station master's house. The station master was about to have breakfast. Horrors! cried Thomas and shut his eyes. The house rocked. Broken glass tinkled. Plaster was everywhere. 
Thomas had collected a bush on his travels. He peered into the room through its leaves. He couldn't speak. The station master was furious. His wife picked up her plate. You miserable engine, she scolded. Just look what you've done to our breakfast. Now I shall have to cook some more. She banged the door. More faster fell. This time, it fell on Thomas. Thomas felt depressed. Workmen propped up the house with strong poles and laid rails through the garden. Meanwhile, Donald and Douglas arrived. Don't fash yourself, Thomas. We'll soon have you back on the rails, they laughed. Donald and Douglas, puffing hard, managed to haul Thomas back to safety. Bits of fencing, the bush, and a broken window frame festooned his front, which was badly twisted. The twins laughed and left him. Thomas was in disgrace. There was worse to come. You are a very naughty engine. I know, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Thomas's voice was muffled behind his bush. You must go to the works and have your front mended. It will be a long job. Yes, sir. Meanwhile, a diesel rail car will do your work. A d d diesel sir? Thomas spluttered. Yes, Thomas. Diesels always stay in their sheds till they are wanted. Daisy was hard to please. She shuddered at the engine shed. This is dreadfully smelly. I'm highly sprung, and anything smelly is bad for my swerves. Next, they tried the carriage shed. This is better said Daisy, but whatever is that rubbish? The rubbish turned out to be Annie Clarabel and Henrietta, who were most offended. We won't stay here to be insulted, they fumed. Percy and Toby had to take them away and spend half the night soothing their hurt feelings. The engines woke next morning feeling exhausted. Daisy, on the other hand, felt bright and cheerful. Ooh, ooh, she tooted as she came out of the yard and back to the station. Look at me, she purred to the passengers. I am the latest diesel, highly sprung and right up to date. You won't want Thomas's bumpy old Annie and Clarabel now. The passengers waited for Daisy to start, but she didn't. She saw that a milk fan was about to be coupled to her and was most indignant. Do they expect me to pull that? Surely, said her driver, you can pull one van. I won't, said Daisy. Percy can do it. He loves messing about with trucks. She began to shudder violently. Nonsense, said her driver. Come on now, back down. Daisy lurched backwards. She was so cross that she blew a fuse. Told you, she said, and stopped. Everyone argued with her, but it was no use. It's fit as orders, she said. What is? My fitter's a very nice man. He comes every week and examines me carefully. Daisy, he says, never, never pull. You're highly sprung and pulling is bad for your swerves. So that's how it is, finished Daisy. One day, Toby brought Henrietta to the station where Percy was grumpily shunting. Hello, Percy. 
I see Daisy's left the milk again. I'll have to make a special journey with it, I suppose. Anyone would think I'd nothing to do, grumbled Percy. Tell you what, replied Toby, I'll take the milk, you fetch my trucks. Their drivers and the station master agreed. Percy had never been to the quarry before. He began ordering the trucks about. Hurry along, he said. The trucks grumbled to each other. This is Toby's place. Percy's got no right to poke his funnel up here and push us around. They whispered and passed the word. Pay Percy out. Pay Percy out. Come along, Puff Percy. No nonsense. We'll give him nonsense, giggled the trucks. But they followed so quietly that Percy thought they were under control. Suddenly, they saw a notice ahead. All trains stop to pin down brakes. Peep, peep, peep! Brakes, guard, please. But before he could check them, the truck surged forward. On, on, they cried. Help, help, whistled Percy. The man on duty at the crossing rushed to warn traffic with his red flag, but was too late to switch Percy to the runaway siding. Frantically trying to grip the rails, Percy slid into the yard. Peep, peep, look out. The brake van was in smithereens. Percy's driver and fireman had jumped clear, but Percy was stranded. Next day, the fat controller arrived. Toby and Daisy had helped to clear the wreckage, but Percy remained on his perch of trucks. We must now try, said the fat controller, to run the branch line with Toby and a diesel. You have put us in an awkward predicament. I am sorry, sir, replied Percy. You can stay there till we are ready. Perhaps it will teach you to be careful with trucks. Percy sighed. The trucks groaned beneath his wheels. He quite understood about awkward predicaments. <laughs>